So yesterday I was just um, spending the evening just uh, upgrading my uh, my Outrun board to uh, to the new version. This is a version two, like enhanced version two point oh two. And what's happened is the uh, the guy who made the enhanced version found a way to add the extra musics that were released for the Nintendo 3DS, and one of them is kind of got popular. It's called Camino and Miamar. And uh, it's really, really cool tune, very much in the style of the old Outrun tunes. And it fits perfectly. I remember getting it on the 3DS and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, you know, it, you know, it'd be cool to play that in the original. And somebody did it. And uh, so I upgraded my board and it sounds awesome. And what I want to do is just actually um, convert that file to MIDI so I can use it for, or anyone can use it afterwards, just maybe to make a, you know, an enhanced version or uh, for me to use for the covers, so that's my plan for this evening. Uh, let me just check. Actually, I did I, I did another vlog for my other channel, and uh, I got it. Um, I recorded it, in fact. So let me see if I can just dig out the. Uh this. Love it. can figure out like chords, like these chords, for example. So that repeats. Do 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 do. Bit longer. It's gonna be easier if I do the chord progression first, and then I can ba you um, sit the bass on top of that, and then I do the melody afterwards, and then I can look after all the little extra bits. Um, but for me, the chord progression is going to be what just drives that tune. But that track is very, very derivative of all of the Outrun, Outrun tracks. That's why it's very clever. Not so much in the chord progression or anything like that, but because it actually reminds you of all the Outrun tracks. Uh, there's bits of Passing Breeze, there's bits of uh, of uh, Splash Wave, there's bits of whatever the other one is called. It's, it's really, really well done. Um, when it goes into m m m a minor, it reminds me of that. Ah, uh, uh, um, oh, what's it called? Magical sound shower, and then uh, those uh, major ones. Like that's magical sound shower to me. That's passing breeze. Um, you do know that kind of stuff. It's it's just uh, it's very very clever, and then the transitions do remind me of Splash Wave between the sections. That kind of stuff. So that's that instrument done and the chord progression. That was the, t I think that was the toughest one. The bass is going to be tricky as well, um, but not as not as uh, tedious. I have the drums m sort of done. I'm not going to do the hi hats or anything like that yet. We can put that on the side, but it just it'll give us a good basis. What I want to do tonight is the bass, and I sort of have started the bass. Where's it gone? It's over there. <laughs> Why are you not playing? And there's another section here and another one over here. Cool. Do, 
Let me see if I can just. I don't quite need all this uh, stuff here. How does it sound without all of that? But this is why I like Acid Pro. You can edit all these tracks right on the mixing panel, uh, as opposed to having to open an extra track. Like you can, you can do that here uh, and open an existing just uh, MIDI editing track. But in Acid Pro, you can edit just right away, right there, and uh, it's such a it's such a handy way and a very very forgiving way and fast way to edit MIDI. Because you can edit a MIDI in relation to each other and just correct both of them in uh, on the fly like that. Uh, which, to my knowledge, no other DAW that I've tried, at least, uh, can do. So, let's get started with that lead. If I was a better keyboard player, I'd play this on the keyboard. But I can't play this live. That melody is interesting. It's actually it. It sounds like it's repeating itself, but it's not. It's actually uh, it, it 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 turns itself around. Uh, it, it's a very clever tune. It sounds simple, and it's it's not. And uh, I I do like it. Or did I get that? There's an extra bit. It's not just the uh, whatever music box or or, or glockenspiel or. Things like that. And then I know the, the final track, oh, like the original track sound fuller, but this is, this is a full on sort of uh, sound font type of uh, production. And then this post processing on it. This is the raw MIDI. Uh, it's as raw as it gets, you know, it's it just, there's no, uh, no effects or anything like that. It's just pure MIDI. There's no mastering or editing or EQ. Like, or panning or anything, it's just as raw as it can get. But I think it sounds pretty close. So next thing I need to work on is, well there's a few things. There's a, a here in the middle there's this uh, sort of bossa nova type of stuff. It, so it just changes from that second part. And then right here right here. It's between those two markers. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I was I was keeping it for last because usually that's when your ears are a bit 
more fine tuned to stuff and I did the obvious stuff like the bass line, the bass line was a, you know, a tricky one to get down. Usually that's how it works, like if something like that is tricky I just find what the bass is doing. And the drums, because you're, you're a bass player, if, if, if you know what the bass is doing, you can you can anchor yourself on that and just work the rest of the piece. Uh, if the bass is lost, it's it's much much tougher. It's not impossible, but it's just much much tougher. The bass does so much of the work in a lot of styles of music. Uh, it it goes vastly underappreciated, but because like the drums, it's something that you expect to be there, but you don't necessarily hear it or actively hear it. But it's just. If it's missing, it's so much harder. So stuff like that, I, I like to do the bass first, or the chords. Depends. Like for in this case, I did the chords first, and then I did the bass second for the main part. So for all this stuff, and then I added the bass. And then drums. And I work the uh, melody, counter melody, and all the uh, stuff that and variations and whatever. But uh, here I started with the chords. But in this case here I started with the bass because there was like so much going on. So once I had that, I added the just the drums. And then I did the chords. Because here you you know where it goes harmonically. Sorry, sorry. No, stop doing that. There you no. Uh, you you with the bass you know where it goes harmonically. You know where it goes rhythmically. And now I can just get the right chords. Then I added the those uh, trumpet stuff that I did on something else, but it just adds that little sort of rhythmic stuff. We're pretty much it. I'm not gonna do the rest of the the drum section here because essentially everything else here is a repeat of what we had previously yeah i think we've got it i think that's it i think that's the uh, pretty much as close as i'm gonna get to this original track that's it <laughs> we've done it um, that is Camino and um all rendered in MIDI. It, it's not the most glamorous <laughs> process, but I, I do enjoy making them, and uh, it's quite a it's quite it's quite a cool exercise to get into, folks. Thank you very much. I'm going to add it here for this stream. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon.